this is video two of a series of videos. This is at least going to be six. It could be as many as eight videos. We're using the same set of pros. There's uh, about 13 of them here, and uh, most of these videos, we're going to try to at least go through all of them. Um, and we're trying to show variations by doing different things. The last video was over just an attachment to be able to execute the throw, but without a jacket. This one is we're going to use kicks and strikes to set us up to get an attachment or to destabilize so that we can execute the throw. So if you watch the previous series of videos that we did, they were short range uh, footwork and some striking concepts and things like that. So this stuff will kind of uh, play off of that. Okay. Before I get too started in this, um, the the some of these videos, uh, there will be a video over jacket grips. There will be a video over jacket with uh, tearing and spinning type concepts, um, destabilizing concepts. Uh, there will be pins uh, on the ground and things like that. You know, by by throwing the person and then pinning them with it. Right. Again, using the theme here is using the same throws but showing how to really execute that throw with, in different situations, we'll say. So, I'm going to start though today with, uh, I'm going to discuss ranges, right? So, well, I, I, you know, to me, I'm talking about using a, a short range or mid range, right? Meaning, I can touch him, right? As long as I can still touch him, I mean, it's kind of a short mid range flex. This is what I want to discuss though. If I'm out here, you know, more of a long range, far enough away, but you know, I can still kick in and those kind of things. Look, I can stand with my shoulder pointing to him, right? Point like this, and or I can even be kind of slightly turned like this. The closer I get, the more I want to make sure that I'm square to him. If I don't, and I get in this close and I'm turned this way, it's really easy for him to take advantage of my you know, we'll say like our dead side over here, right? All he's got to do is close this door. Really easy for him to attack me or to go, you know, to get my flank or to even to get my back. So be sure that when you're, 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 you're fighting with a guy in this range that you can touch them with both hands equally, right? I don't want to be like this and then you, you get my point. So I want to make sure I'm facing with my sternum. So very similar you know, I'm not trying to go on a tangent here, but very similar to, uh, we'll say, uh, fencing, right? If I'm using a, a, a thrusting weapon, like an epee, me being this way, right, so I give him less of a target than he can hit, right? He's thrusting, mainly things are linear. Now, you can go this way, I mean, you could use diagonals, but predominantly, though, to give you the best protection, you're going to be this way. And if you look at a lot of long-range kicking styles, even like Taekwondo, they're to the side like this. With something like saber fencing, cutting, which using diagonals, it uses some thrusting actions, but most of it is diagonals. The person will be square like this, so that it's harder for you to get this side. If you were turned like this, one, it would be hard to execute a portion of your movements, but if he is using a cutting weapon too, very easy for him to take these diagonals. And the same thing as it relates to punching. If I'm here, it's so much easier for me to get off hooks and uppercuts and swinging motions, as well as my straight strikes if I'm facing. The other part of it too, I want this hand to deal with this side and this hand to deal with this side. Now, if he wants to turn sideways to me up in here, that's fine. Just It's easier for me to get and execute the things that I want in most situations. Okay, so just wanted to say that. So, uh, as it relates to the kicks and the punches, if we're standing like this, and say I want to go to the inside versus the outside, or straight ahead, it, the front kick is an excellent kick because I can kick uh, straight on, and look, I can fall off to the side, to go to his outside, or to his inside, or to land straight ahead, right? Um, if I use my cross kick, right, this way, 
is predominantly going to help me to get to the inside. And you can switch with your person. So say we're in an open stance like this. This is a great kick to do to help me to get to his flank side. I wouldn't want to do it this way, though, and fall to this side, right? Because then I'm going to give him my flank. Switch your feet to this. So if I do my side kick, say, do my side kick, and look, uh, I've mentioned this in other videos. I, um, when it comes to the side kick, if I'm doing it low, I can do it this way, uh, but I don't really want to do a side kick right above here. Right? It's, uh, it's not good on my hip or anybody's hip for that matter. But two, it's easier to get it caught. So usually I'm going to be kicking low into, the, in, into his legs, harder for him to catch it. But really, I'm just turning the foot like this, not all the way to this extreme. I'm not trying to use it just to strike or to use it to create a, you know, like I shared this before, right? I'm kicking to move away to, you know, create distance from the guy. Not about that, but I'm going to kick in the foot sideways so it's easier for me to land here. The same thing that I mentioned about the cross a while ago, you probably want to do this and land here, right? But now he's, can, he can really, if he pushed in on me, it would be really easy for him to destabilize me, right? So, Okay, so if I'm using kicking and striking to maintain my distance for my assault, meaning, right, I'm in my short range, but I'm kicking out here and I'm using all kinds of movements to execute. I'm not trying to close the distance on him. I'm not trying to get an attachment. I'm just trying to strike. There's a lot more movements that I would try to articulate, right? But from for me to enter, I'm primarily going to use a front kick, uh, a cross kick, a side kick, and an inside shin kick or outside shin kick. Um, we would call it rubbing or binding, depending on how I'm trying to deploy the movement. And that's it. That's all I need. The striking is either going to be a straight line or a, a hook this way or a back fist or a hammer fist this way. Right? I'm either trying to uh, close something or attach to something. I'm not trying to. Um, I'm not trying to beat him with, with strikes at that moment. Right? I'm trying to get an attachment so I can execute my throw. So we're keeping it super simple. Um, so if you think like this, a kick and a punch. If he doesn't block, right? He doesn't block at all. And I'm just going to keep traveling. If I get here, then I'm going to use my hand to destabilize him. Another video that we'll do is if this fails, right? I go to do something, and he comes with something else. And I have to deal with this side. It's too much to do in one video, right? Or a couple of videos, because this, this will probably be 30, 40 minutes to explain all of this. So I'm just trying to lay it out. All we're trying to do today, we're not trying to to work the distance and the striking and kicking as its own unit out here, but we're trying to use these direct, simple movements to get an attachment or to enter in to try to get that attachment on the person. And yes, there's always something he can do with the other side, or he moves, or he steps, or what have you. And we'll do that in another What If video, okay, which will be part of the series of this exciting video. So I um, don't want to bore you with the, everything, but if I don't say all these things, then people will be guessing about, well, why don't you do that, and why is it like that, and all of that stuff. So, so anyway, um, we're going to start with the first one, cut. Um, and, or you can also call it chopping. So I'm going to do a front kick, right? And I'm going to do a straight punch. And my goal is, is when I do this, he makes an attachment. He blocks it in some way. And then, just like we did in the previous video, I'm going to seize his arm. And then from here, I'll execute the throw, just like we did in the other video. The only difference is now is we combine these two actions to get what we did in the last video. So it's not that hard. Um, so again, what I said earlier, yes, he can do something else, right? He can punch with the other hand, and i got to do okay. Not in this video, all right? Just the idea of getting the attachment. <clears throat> What's the value of practicing these? It is... Being able to make your movements more and more seamless, to be able to get angles and positions and get those attachments and work that in your mind, right? And 
so it's kind of purely kind of an offensive function. Then when we have to see when they actually do other things and things like that, then we have to look at how will we counter that or turn it into a combination. So he's going to do it to me. He do a straight punch, he sees this, and then he dumps it, right? One, two, dump inside, and then dump. Same thing, right? <clears throat> we did this with the other video, but I did this, and I don't have to come here, but I can chug this arm and pull it across and step in and dump. Does it to me? Keep your hands up here always, right? Kick, strike, step, release, and throw. And, or, kick, strike, seize, switch, step, throw. When you practice with a partner, you can do it kind of what Jonathan is doing right now, but you can also do these in Right, but really work your stability and your balance, right? Good to you. And uh, do a couple over here. A kick, a strike, a switch it, and a throw. And like I said, the video after this, we're going to go to pins and the controls on the ground. So when I throw the guy, I would be trying to pin him the standard type functional actions like this, but we're not going to worry about that today. Kick, strike, switch, step in, right, and I'm far enough behind his foot that when I bring this leg through, my hip will be equal to his. Okay, our next one is forward kicking. I'm going to use that partial side kick, right? So if you think that the side kick would be at 9 o'clock, I'm kind of doing it at 11. Just enough that my toes are turned out this side, right? And I'm going to use a hammer fist or a back fist. I have to use this hammer fist because it's, I can put more weight into the movement, okay? So I do my kick and I, I do my strike. And I'm going to seize this as I do. I'm going to step through and I'm going to drive this in. Okay? So we'll go one, two, seize, scoop. This to me. And if you look at the previous video, we talked about this too. When I get in here, I'm going to push this into him like this so that when I start to pull him or bend him backwards, my elbow pulls away, but not before already engaging my hip, right? If I do it up here like this first, I'm just going to be focused on the shoulder girdle, and it's going to be harder for me to utilize the core and the lower muscles in the legs, you know, because in reality, it's the, the, the muscles in my core are helping me with the leg work here. Right, so this is a functional side kick, a hammer fist, I seize and I drive in, right? I'm not just I'm not gonna do it like this. Right? I, he's gonna move, right? So as soon as I do it, I, I force into him to make him have to stabilize. Once he stabilizes or he starts to, he'll probably push back and he does scoop. Right? And if you're practicing with a partner, it's good to go ahead and put this arm up here at your head, like this, so that if you, when you fall, you're training yourself, training yourself, keep the hand up here. A lot of times, I've seen this happen a lot in the past, you keep the arm down here, and you start to fall. A lot of times, as you start to push the arm out as you're falling, if you're falling faster than, your arm may get kind of caught, or it may end up like this. You don't want that either. So go ahead and just try to leave it up here, or if you have it here already, like you're trying to defend with it, all you're going to do is just fold it in. So if you think like we have this movement in watch out for combing the hair, right? So they're like uh, parrots. Like this. Um, if I think like that, um, it's real easy for me to get the hand up. 
So he does it to me. Look, he doesn't want to just leave me there, right? And he does this move. He wants to. He wants to give me a little bit of a bump. Do it over here. So again, I kick, I strike, and then look, I kind of bump as I get inside, and then I'm just going to scoop him up. Try your best to go with them and maintain attachment. Don't release. <clears throat> Does it to me? Push. Look, see, I hang on to this. You see the next video that we make when we start doing the pins and stuff? This is here. I smash into the ground. I lock this wrist, control this. I can even do these kind of fun moves like this. This is really painful to his bicep and to his arm. You're messing up that. All kind of functional stuff, right? Okay, so uh, the next one, outer leg hooking. So with this one, uh, we're going to use the front kick again, or we can use the side kick. Um, both of them trying to get to his plank. Now, if he was in an open stance with me, yeah, like this, and I wanted this move, I might would use, I might would use this kick. But then I'm gonna need to come off with this rear hand, right? It comes something like this, boom, right? To, to try to get the motion, right? Or I do this like this, and I would come this way, I can wrap him up like this, right? So from here, I kick with my hammer fist. And look, I'm going to switch and bring it to the outside and hook and then dunk him. Mm -hmm. Does it to me? Switch. switch and I want to do it from the outside, I come here, and use this like this, and then look, just like if I was going to do cut, right, I moved in like this, I'll do the same thing, I'll come here and I'll move the leg in, and I'll do it from the outside. To me, the movement is shorter than I want when I'm doing it like this versus it here, I can get so much more uh, length out of it, okay? Now, if we do it as an open stance, from this side so we can see that one. So we're like this, and we still want to get this arm, and we want to hook this leg. In this situation, either way again, but I get more length on the inside. But if you're going to go your follow-on move, like the pins and the controls and things like that, it depends on what I want to do when I put him on the ground. It's different from the squat out. What we're trying to do is get control before the person is on the ground throw them, maintain the control, and then when they go to hit the ground, we follow them, and I maintain my atta attachment so I get my control or position. It's different. Uh, we don't sacrifice and then you go to the ground and you buy for position to get your, to get your position, to get your, your submission or your control. So, so anyway, so from here, kick, and I can use this hand, my back hand, this way, just strike, and I can hook the arm, right? So, so one, two, three. I'm not overly fond of that, but I kick here and I'll go underneath like this. So you think like this, and then wrap him up. The more I shove it inside, it doesn't get anything. I just dump it, right? So, but the the more the more I can push this inside, the more I'm gonna. Move toward his torso. Don't try to fight out here with his, his arm. Most people, they're, they're not going to do it, and then they'll hit you. <laughs> or they'll wrap you up. So again, here, strike, catch. Yeah. See if you can do it. Um, so, 